Welcome, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Ingenious EWS 850AP, and this is an 802.11ax outdoor managed Wi-Fi access point. This was provided to me by Ingenious, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you're interested in this, I'll put a link in the description to this. So this supports the latest Wi-Fi 6, so this supports AX1800 2x2 5GHz plus 2x2 2.4GHz dual concurrent architecture. 1024 QAM modulation technology to deliver 25% higher throughput compared to 256 QAM. Advanced OFDMA for allocated air resource. Multi-user, multiple in, multiple out, and beamforming to serve a high capacity environment. Spatial reuse enables simultaneous transmission. Built for harsh outdoor use with IP67 enclosure rate. So the six means there's no dust ingress, and the seven is a waterproof rating. And that means this could technically be submerged. I think it's a meter for 30 minutes or something like that. But it's not made to be submerged all the time. That's just the water rating. So this is waterproof enough to put on the outside of a building. So let's get this open. So this looks like a compliance declaration here. This talks about Easy Master, their network management software. And this is Easy Wi-Fi Planner. We have an installation guide. Here. Here we have a PoE adapter. Here's a mounting plate. Here's the access point. I'm just covering up the serial number there. Here's the power cable. There are four antennas. So it came with some anchors here, different styles. There's a little screw there. That might be for grounding here. Then we have some clamps. So the antennas are labeled and so is the access point so you can put these on the right place. So this is the 2.4 gigahertz, the five gigahertz. Okay, so I have all those on there. Okay, so this is going to slide on here and then it has a screw to retain it. So this bracket has a number of different options here. You can see it has some holes here for mounting screws. Then it also has these places here where you can mount a hose clamp. So you can mount the clamp in here and then mount this around a pipe. So it can be a vertical or horizontal pipe. This will slide in here like so. And then this screw will lock it in place. Then this screw here is for the grounding post and that is here. I'm going to pull these off just to make it easier to maneuver. So this is where we connect the ethernet cable. So we had a little plug in it. So there's an ethernet jack down in here and your ethernet cable will go in here. You'll need to put this on before you terminate the end. So you'll run your ethernet through here As you tighten this down, it will tighten around your ethernet cable. There we go. So now we have a watertight seal here. Okay, so now I'm going to connect it up to my network. So I'll start at the access point. And I'm just using short cables here to do my config. When you install it permanently, you will do what I talked about earlier and terminate your cable. So that's really far down in there. You'd want to use a screwdriver to disconnect that. So I have that in my access point. That will go into the PoE injector. You have two ports here. You have PoE and LAN. I want to go into the PoE port. Then I'll plug into the LAN port. And this is power. So I have people of all levels that watch these videos sometimes. So I may go over some pretty basic things here. So if you're new to this whole thing with PoE, this wire here, it's super short, you can see, but this wire would be your long wire. So this would be down where you have your data, you know, your servers and things like that, maybe your access point. 
maybe your modem to get onto the internet. And you might say screw this to the wall or a piece of plywood or something. And this ethernet here would be really long. And this would pass data and power to the access point. So if this is on the outside of a building, you would just have one hole that comes through for this to go out and you just have a grommet for that. And you wouldn't have to have like a power brick hanging off the building or you wouldn't have to run power. It would all run over that one cable. So now I'll plug this in and then I'm going to plug this end into my computer and then I'll go over to the computer and we'll continue from there. Okay, so I'm on my computer here. I'm using a Mac. You can do the same thing with a PC. You need to go into your network settings and this will be different on Windows and Mac. So I'll just go to network here. I want to click on ethernet. So on Windows, you have to go to your Ethernet adapter, but then you want to do the same process here. You want to go to manual, and then you want to put an IP address in, like 192.168.1.10. And then I'll hit apply. Now I'll go into my web browser. I'll enter in 192.168.1.1. And this will bring up the access point. So the default username and password here is admin. So it has a box here asking me to change my password. I'm going to hit ignore here, but I would not hit ignore if you're setting this up. I'm just doing this for demonstration. I'll probably reset this later and configure it from scratch. So this device can have different modes on it. You can have access point, mesh, WDS AP, WDS bridge, and WDS station. So I'll walk through this setting it up as an access point. But if there's a configuration you want me to dig deeper into, let me know in the comments and I can maybe make another video on that. So I'll click through these menu items. We have connections. And we shouldn't have any connections here. Real time, this has the load of the CPU. Network basic, so this is for our ethernet. And we have wireless. And this is where we set up our Wi-Fi. We have 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. And this is where we can set up the mode. So we have access point, WDS access point, WDS bridge, and WDS station. And we have the same on five gigahertz. So this has a checkbox next to it for green. If we uncheck that, we'll get more configuration options. You can see here like transmit power, but I'll leave that on. We have channel HT mode. On 2.4 gigahertz, we have 40 megahertz, 20, 40 megahertz, and 20 megahertz. And on five gigahertz, we have 80, 40, and 20. For channel, we can click on configuration and we can choose what channels we want to set up here. These are both set to all now, I'll leave those as is. Client limits is enabled or disabled. So if we disable that, we can disable the number of clients it will allow. Multicast to unicast stream conversion. And this says multicast transmission is a one-to-many group communication methodology in which a wireless LAN AP forwards all broadcast traffic from a multicast source to a client subnet where multiple client devices are listening. Access point detection. If we hit scan there, we'll get a new screen up and this will scan for access points in our area. I'm not going to do that right now because it'll show all the access points in my neighborhood. Next we have 11AX mode, so we can enable that. So that will enable the Wi-Fi 6 capabilities. And we have distance, it says 0 to 30 kilometers. And this is both set to 0.6 miles. Next we have the access point, so I can rename this. I'll call it Outdoor AP, and we can hit Edit here, and this will bring up the configuration for the wireless network. So we can change the SSID here, we can hide it, we can do client isolation. So client isolation will keep devices from communicating with each other on the wireless network. So they'll all be able to access the internet, but they won't be able to access each other. VLAN isolation will cause all the wireless network to go through a VLAN. And then we have L2 isolation, and this will keep wireless clients off of your network. Next we have band steering. This will have your access point connect up your clients to prefer 5 gigahertz, force 5 gigahertz, or balance between 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. I'll leave that off. Next we have security mode. We have all the standards here. So I'll set this up as WPA to personal. I'll enter in a passphrase. I would use a better passphrase on this one. <laughs> we have radius settings, radius accounting, fast roaming. We have an access control list mode. So this allows you to enter MAC addresses to tell which clients can and can't use your network. And we have wireless traffic shaping. So this is where you can set download and upload limits. So I'll save this here and I'll rename this again. Now, if I scroll down here, we have the management interface and this is a management radio. So this way you can configure the access point from a smartphone or tablet. So you can enable and disable this. And then it says always on, turn off if idle in 15 minutes. So that's a pretty good way to do it there. So when you turn it on, you'll have the management radio available for 15 minutes. You can get into it using your username and password. So you'd want to go into edit here and change the password on it. I think the default is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I wouldn't leave it in always on in a production environment. And here we have guest network settings. 
and that would be if you have it checked over here. And down here we have management VLAN settings. So I'll save these, I'll hit apply over here, and that will apply the changes. Next we have mesh settings. I'm not going to go through all this, this is if you're setting up a mesh network. I'll just click through these real quick. Then we have Management Advanced. So you can set this up on your Easy Master Sky Key. And in the description below, I'll put a link to my Ingenious Playlist, and I have videos on setting up Sky Key. If you have more than one of these access points, I would absolutely get a Sky Key to manage them. And we have SNMP settings, CLI, so that's the character line interface. That allows you to SSH into it. And you have to enable that, though. So here's SSH settings. You can enable that, and then you can use CLI to manage it. This is HTTPS settings. And then this is for email alert. Next we have time zone. So it says automatically get date and time. So it's doing that from an NTP server. And you can set your time zone here. I'll set mine. I'm in central time zone. I'll enable daylight saving time. Oh, I think I needed to put the dates in for that, but I can mess with that later. Next we have Wi-Fi scheduler. So this allows you to automatically reboot it or tell it to turn on and off at certain times. So if you have a cafe and you're putting this out on your patio, you can have this only available, say 15 minutes before you open and 15 minutes after you close, and then turn it off after that. Then we have tools. So this has network tools like ping, traceroute, NSLOOKUP, speed test, and device discovery. Click on account. This is where we set our username and password. We have firmware here. So I typically connect these up to my SkyKey and I let the SkyKey deal with the firmware upgrades. You can back up the settings here, and I would highly recommend once you get it set up to how you want, you would back up the settings. If you ever have to reset it for whatever reason, you can just take your config and upload it to the new one and you're ready to go. And then next we have the log. So I need to jump back into the basic setting here for network, set it up as a static IP, and I need to set up an IP address on my main network. And that is 7. Dot, I gotta think of something here. I think we do 7.7 .7 is available. And then I'll set my gateway here and my DNS, and that's all set up now. So when I save this, it's not going to be available on this computer anymore. So I'm going to plug the access point into my switch, and I'll plug my computer back into my switch. So when this comes back up, I want it to open up on 192.168.7.7. So I'll open up a new tab, I'll paste in that IP address, and it looks like it's ready to go. So I can type in my username and password, which I need to change. And now we're up and running. So now I'm going to connect up to this on my iPad. Under my other networks, I can see Outdoor IP. I can also see that management radio. I'll click on the Outdoor IP. I'll enter in the password. And now I'm connected up. So that's the basic setup of the Ingenious EWS 850AP Outdoor Wi-Fi Access Point. So I just scratched the surface of what you can do with one of these. If there's something specific you want me to cover, drop a comment below. And as I said earlier, I'll put a link in the description of my Ingenious playlist, and you can find any videos I've made in the past or any future videos in that. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.